Sleepers Podcast, Wednesday, March 13th. Big Ten Tournament kicks off today. Big Ten Awards are out. We have another Big Ten-centric episode for you. Should be a fun time. And we are in the midst of all of our previews and recaps. We kicked those off yesterday over on the Sleepers channel. It's been fun thus far. How are you feeling? How's morale, Cart? How's morale, Gregory? How's How's morale? morale? Yeah, it's March. How's morale? How's morale? Uh, My prestigious program has gone four straight years without a first team all big 10 member my prestigious program has lost 13 games four years in a row um my prestigious program just got packed up at assembly hall uh, and before that almost got packed up by northwestern and then before that got packed up by iowa and ohio state um how's morale it's bad uh, but I'm here. Being here is half, half of the job. I'll give you credit, my friend. And not only are you here, but a second set of golf clubs is here. Uh, because as I made a joke at your expense in one of our preview videos earlier today, you just continue to put things behind yourself in the frame of the camera for zero reason at all. Is this a bit? It, it, no, it's a metaphor. What's the metaphor? It's a metaphor because I'm putting all things behind me that may affect my mood. And even though they're in the frame, they're out of mind. Like they're out of sight and out of mind. Okay. So the vacuum is behind you. What What's the deal with that? What do you have against the vacuum? Nothing. It's a simulation. Uh, it's, a, it's a symbol of that life sucks. <laughs> all right. Uh, I look forward to you adding additional items to the frame behind you, which... Makes zero sense to me, but hey, that's why you're you, Cart. Uh, let's get to the show. Do you want to kick us off with a YouTube comment today? I would love to kick us off with a YouTube comment, uh, if you give me a second here. Uh, this one is coming from $10 Tommy 27 Sparty is cooked. Cam Christie with a dagger three to send Izzo to the NIT. Greg, if we lose this game, are we going to the NIT? I don't think so. Okay. I, it baffles me. It frustrates me to no end, but I don't think so. Okay, but if we probably probably first four in type game, playing game, if if that does unfold the way it does, if we do miss the tournament and we get invited to the NIT, do we go? Yeah. Actually, I don't that's a really good question. I don't know if Izzo's pride could take that. I don't know. What do you think? I think he would I think he would go. I think he'd go. I I really I think that's a toss up. I think it's 50-50. Um but we don't we don't need to spend time thinking about it as much as I would love to think about it. I we're the net thinks you guys are like the 21st best team in the country. So net sick. shout shout out Kevin Paga. Like what? huh? I don't whatever, who cares? Let's move on. Uh you want to go to comments, Discord comments? Please. Another great day in the Discord yesterday. This has been uh maybe the most fun week of discussion. In there, a lot of good stuff happening. Um, I, I feel like a couple of people joined yesterday as well. I don't remember who we didn't give shout outs to. Brick Jones is in there. Shane B joined. I think he's a new member. Anyway, shout out to the new members. We are 18 people away from Carter getting a tattoo. That needs to happen before the national championship game, for the record. I'm putting that in at the back end of this. Uh, let's get to the comments. We read comments from the Discord every day. It's the number one way to support the show. We mean that from the bottom of our hearts. Join the Discord link in the description. We start today with Luke, who says, what are the odds you bring Goodman and Dockich on the show for the Natty preview? Uh, there's not a chance in hell that Dan Dockich will ever grace this show as long as I'm here. Not even in a bring them on and let's chat way. Like never, ever, ever will he be allowed on this recording. Mm, okay. Noted. Uh, it would be electric. Anytime we could get on camera Goodman versus Dockage, though, that's that's one of my favorite rivalries in college basketball. But uh, yeah, I don't, don't know that either will ever be on the show. Uh, Goodman did come on the show in the past. That was a fun episode a couple years ago. But yeah. Um, yeah, Dockage. If Dockage came on the show, I think you would probably be dead. Yeah, 100%. yeah. 
We don't want that. Derek says, let's say these Big Ten jobs open in the next year. Who's your ideal replacement to get the Big Ten back to something other than the Purdue Invitational? My picks are in parentheses. Uh, Oregon, if that comes open, Derek predicts Ots, USC, John Calipari. That's an interesting one. Iowa, Shirts, Indiana, Chris Beard, Michigan, Nate Oates, Ohio State, Sean Miller. I think that all those coaching options would – add a little bit of juice and revitalization to the league. Um, at the same time, I, a lot of those are unrealistic in my opinion. I think if the over under was 0. 0.5 of those happening, I might take the under. If you gave me plus money, <laughs> I would. Um, but I think everyone you listed would be good. My, my bet for the person that would be most successful would be beard at Indiana. I think beard is just a uh, really truly elite basketball coach and not the greatest person, but, you can put that aside he will probably build you a contender for 20 straight years relentless mt says while i have had the privilege to play some basketball growing up and an even greater privilege to coach all levels from kindergarten through high school varsity it is obvious that not all fans have had the same privilege and subsequently many of those without the direct exposure lack a full understanding of the game what percentage of fans would you speculate have participated in organized basketball at any level elementary school and beyond and do you feel trolls tend to be those fans with or without the direct experience I have a hard time uh, like doing this because I think that almost everyone has played basketball, even at like an elementary school level. And that might be an assumption by me that I should not be making, but I feel like a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, I have some thoughts on this that I, I'm not sure many people agree with, but it makes sense coming from like my personal side of life here. One of my biggest frustration points is when people pull out the, Oh, did you even play? Like, why are you talking about this? Did you even play? Like, I can tell you from from my perspective as a fan, many of my least favorite analysts are the guys who just were great players that got given jobs as an analyst because they were great players. Um, I I don't need to name names. I'm sure me saying that have people popping up in their minds that they can think of. That doesn't mean all of them are true. Like there are, there are analysts who I think are iconic. I think Robbie Hummel is the best person in the sport right now calling games. Um, but there are many that just aren't that good or aren't that entertaining to listen to. And I'm not saying that we are better than any of them. I'm not, we have to earn everything we get, but uh, I don't think it is by definition something you need to have done in order to one understand basketball and two make entertaining content around basketball, whether that's calling games, whether that's doing what we do with previews and recaps, whether it's whatever you want. Uh, there's a lot of smart people on the math side of this sport. I don't know how how much any of these guys played, but like the the way Evan Miyakawa and Ken Pomeroy and all of those guys have redefined the way we interpret basketball is a good thing for the game. And it's often the players who are the most loud about it are like, well, did Ken even play? It's like, I'm not even the biggest metrics guy, but that's a really stupid argument to me. So um, makes sense that I believe that when all I did was play a couple of years in high school, but I don't think it's a qualification to understand basketball. Yeah, I'm with you. It's 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 like a, it's a media. I, I, I'm with you, like as a guy who played, I don't think I've ever played the, I played basketball card. I would know. Actually, I might have done it when it was an actual like rule, like, like just understand the rules of the game. Like that's everyone. Something should some some everyone should understand that. But I don't think I've objectively like been in an argument with someone and be like, okay, your argument doesn't mean shit because you didn't play and I played. And I think our answer to that question got a little flipped from what we're, Relentless was asking. I do think like. Trolls come in all shapes and sizes. I think there are trolls who played a lot of basketball, and then I think there are trolls who didn't. To me, that's more a personality trait than it is uh, how much basketball do you know trait. But uh, for those of you out there that did either coach and or play basketball at a serious level, I do think there is an advanced level of X's and O's knowledge that just doesn't exist with people who didn't, probably including myself. And, um, you know, I coached high school for enough years that I like to think I I have enough of that, but um yeah i think it, to me there's not a one size fits all of like this person played so they're a smart fan i think there are a lot of stupid fans that played high levels of basketball and then i think there are a lot of smart fans that didn't play high levels of basketball it's just a personality trait uh doc that was a fun question i enjoyed that one dr doctor says if the big 10 held a survivor game show 
with the 14 programs. Who would win? Who would finish top three and who gets voted off first? This might be my favorite question in channel history. I don't know if I can answer this because I don't understand Survivor to the level that you do. Oh, okay. I So I might need to put like a good afternoon of thinking into this. And I feel like I could write up a whole like Survivor season of just fictional things that happen here. My initial gut... I like the first boot is always someone who just doesn't get along with others and pisses people off at camp. And uh, I don't know, shoots their shot too early. So my initial thought honestly would either be that it's Michigan who gets voted for voted first off or maybe Purdue. Um, I think Purdue is hard to get along with right now, partially because they're great, which might keep them around as a challenge beast for a little I, you know, I'm going to say Michigan gets voted off first because, in general, Michigan's arrogance would really cause problems at camp. So, uh, and a little bit of delusion with how bad they are right now. I think Michigan gets voted off first. Uh, who would finish top three? You got to have some stealth. You got to wait to shoot your shot, and you got to capitalize in big moments. I think Northwestern makes the final three. I think... Hmm. I'm trying to think of like just who else is like agreeable or who Northwestern would want to work with. Maybe Nebraska. Maybe Northwestern and Nebraska make it far. And then I would think they would carry someone with them that is an easy like not vote getter. So I'll say Northwestern, Nebraska, and Penn State make it to the end. Uh, Northwestern wins, gets the votes. Uh, Penn State gets no votes. And Purdue and Illinois are voted out like mid merge because too big of threats. Honestly, I could kind of see that the the Nebraska Northwestern partnership will carry them far in that one. Both same logo, same, yeah. same you know Boo and Kise, like that'll work. Yeah, yeah. I think Michigan State would make it far too. I don't know why I ignored you guys. You'll, you'll make it far, but. You'll, I think by the end of the game, what usually happens in Survivor is like you get to the end, there's three huge threats and there's three non-huge threats and the huge threats get voted out. Like That's that's what would happen to Illinois, Purdue, Michigan State. And people, by the way, people think I don't realize this. When people try to tell me the insult of like you wouldn't do well on Survivor, they think I'm going to come out hot and shoot my shot. No, I know the game, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all ain't even going to see me on your screen for the first six episodes. But when we get down to that final six, final seven, I'm going to be pulling the strings and people are going to be thinking they're pulling the strings. In reality, I'm pulling the strings. Malik Perry says, I know we rarely talk about women's college basketball, but the South Carolina LSU game was special. The center from South Carolina shouldn't have apologized. Her teammate got sucker punched and she showed why you don't mess with her team. Loved it. Uh, love that Malik waits until someone gets punched to bring women's basketball in here. Uh, just very on brand. Did you see the fight? And what do you think on it? Also, it wasn't a sucker punch. Uh, <laughs> I think sucker punch is a bad uh, uh, interpretation of what happened. But I mean, it's, it, it ha it's basketball. Like stuff like that happens in basketball all the time. Um, I didn't like that the team, like how it unfolded because it was like LSU was down and they basically lost the game and they let their frustration show. And I think that is, in my opinion, weak just to, I think that with anybody like, you know, teams that want to, I don't like teams that want to act tough when they're down and losing basketball games and like the game's out of reach. Like you had the whole game to act tough and you didn't. So, uh, at the same time, I love a good altercation. I, I love it. So. It was good to see. Yeah. Uh, I wish, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't like that the first time we're talking women's basketball this year is because of a fight. Like, I feel like that, that doesn't pay enough respect to how good and entertaining women's basketball has been this season. There's a lot of superstars. I think there's more talent in that sport than I've ever seen in my life. I'm watching more of it than I ever have. So, um, yeah, the, it was like an entertaining moment, but I feel icky that that's like, oh, they fought. Now let's talk about it on the sleeper show. We should probably talk more about it in general. Braden Shrewsbury says, uh, start practice for my new third grade AAU team on Friday. Not really a question. I just know Greg specifically has done some youth coaching, but not sure if the age range you coached applied to this young of a group. If it does, what's your general advice on how to run the team? Uh, the, the years that I was like assigned a team and had a coach for a couple months, at least were all eighth grade or higher. Um, I have coached 
third grade before. Like I've, I've just been assigned like, Hey, run a practice or I need your help this week with this lower level, run a tournament. Um, biggest thing I can advise you on is your job with that age at that little of an age is to make them have a good experience, make them enjoy basketball, help them learn the basics and don't do anything else. Literally make sure everybody gets in and out of the game. There is no room for strategy at the third grade level. There's just not uh, because you're, you're going to have players that can't pick up even how to dribble, let alone like what defense are we in? And that's fine. Like you, you have to embrace that. You will also have probably one to two players who like are really advanced. It might be a really good player one day. Um, and you can coach them differently, but I mean, I know from when I coached, like I, I wanted to be like the tactician who comes up with X's and O's stuff. You can't do that at the lowest level. It's literally just about make them go home, make them happy, make them tell their parents they had a good time and uh, make sure everybody gets to check into the game, get on the court. Any thoughts on that card? I, I think that just confirms why I can't coach at that level. I'm not accepting any of that. <laughs> what would your strategy be? I like my killers are going to play. My bums are going to sit. Uh, we're going to run some good stuff. We're going to check 94 feet. They're young. Like we're getting up in people. They de- that other team definitely can't dribble if they're in third grade. So we're in their shit off rip. Um, I don't want all the parents to love me. Like, why would I want them to love me? I got my own parents to love me, my own wife to love me. So I don't, I don't need, I don't need love because miss, you know, Mr. Oppenheimer's son isn't getting in the game when he ain't got no left. Well, I wouldn't want to piss off Mr. Oppenheimer personally. That, that that name don't carry weight in this day and age. All right. Uh, well, hopefully, Braden, you can find uh, the the middle, right? That's what we always say. Find the middle between Cart and I, and you'll probably be a great coach. Jake Bridges says, would you be in favor of outlawing fouling up three late? I get it's a good strategy, but it takes a lot of excitement and drama out of the closing seconds. No, no I hate playing the take things out of basketball games that are part of basketball games. Take, um, and I don't mean that, that against Jake at all. I just like... Uh, you just can't like take something like that. I don't like taking a, a, a strategic part of basketball that can give you advantage out of the game if you use it correctly. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not a foul up three guy. I get the math behind it, and if my team was in the situation, I would probably do it. I'm not a fan of it in general. I don't think you can take it out of the game. Um, I hate the Elam ending. To be honest with you, I think anybody who claims the Elam ending like fixes the whole foul up three problem is accepting a solution that usually results in free throw attempts ending a game. That's the worst to me. It's, it's literally identical. There's just a cap on it and not a timer on it. Um, I, yeah, I don't think you can take it out as frustrating as it is, but my answer to the teams is be better. Find a way. Hope you get lucky with some fouls and make a shot. I, I just want to let it be known. I'm a foul up two guy. I want the last shot. <laughs> That's okay. Todd golden. He used yeah. to do that. I don't know if he does. Any, I don't think he does anymore. Uh, Sandman says, just saying we are pro-Nets here and Greg is wrong for being anti-Net. Yeah, we had a big discussion in the Discord yesterday. Uh, I was just complaining about the Net loving Michigan State so much, and that led me to the realization that I'm anti-Net. Name me a good Net, and I will name you a liar. I think Nets are overrated. I don't think they add value to society. I'm talking all Nets. Like, I asked people, what's your favorite Net? And the first answer I got was fishnet stockings. That tells me all I need to know about nets. What about, uh, a bas- what about a basketball net? The basketball net's fine, but it gets all the credit for the swish when the ball's doing the work. That's my problem. That net is just a, a nepotism net. It gets all the love that it doesn't deserve. What about like the nets in all the games you love? Like you love spike ball. There's a net involved with that. It's nothing special. Like, I it, you. nope, you're fine. You're nope. No, you could you could literally play spike ball on a mini trampoline. We don't need a net. Play it on a trampoline. It's probably better. It's probably more explosive. Yeah, exactly. The best argument I've heard is Netflix. And what is this? 2012. Like, what about? The, okay, first of all, relax. Netflix still slaps. No, nah, um, Hulu and Peacock put that shit to bed. It's over. Nah, nah, it's nah, over. Nah, it's nah, over. Nah. Bye bye. So you're, if you're keeping one streaming service, you're keeping Hulu or Peacock. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm yeah, keeping Pe- I'm keeping Peacock because it has Big Ten games and the Twitters, the best show on television right now. So you're keeping a streaming service because it streams Big Ten basketball 
in a world where Northwestern and Nebraska are a top four team in the Big Ten, that's just bad business. Give me Netflix. Give me all that. I'll take some documentaries. I'll I'll watch documentaries about good basketball and not what I have been subjected to the last couple of years. Yeah, I still haven't heard an argument from anyone that makes me believe Nets. Sandman wants to add to his comment. He says, Nets are crucial inventions because they serve various essential purposes across many fields, such as fishing, hunting, agriculture, sports, and safety. My commentary, all of those fields would be fine if Nets disappeared today. We would use better tools than Nets for all of them. They enable humans to catch food, okay? So do guns. Protect crops from pests. Have you not heard of pesticide? Create boundaries for safety, okay? Why don't we just put some traffic cones out there? Facilitate various forms of recreation and transportation. What net facilitates anything? In those categories, nothing. It's it's getting all the credit. It's an accessory. Their versatility and practicality make them indispensable tools throughout history and across cultures. Your thoughts? I thought I liked Nets. What about the New Jersey Nets? One of the most overrated franchises in sports history. They literally, they were so unlovable that the state of New Jersey said, we don't want y'all anymore. It's New Jersey. I, I just think we're slip or we're really sleeping on basketball nets. I get the swish discourse, but come on. Like you 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 gotta cut down a net when you win. Okay, so when a championship is won, the very first thought from everyone involved is let's get rid of the net. Okay. And we're talking this is an indispensable piece. The moment you win, you want to get rid of it. It's insane. Let's move on. Uh, I will fight anyone on this as long as you want, by the way. I could do this all day. Guy says, does the name Daniel Richard Bowie mean anything to you? First off, if we're going to go that route, which I don't advise we do, I'm going to pronounce it Daniel Richard Bowie. But no, it doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, it doesn't. He's Boo. He's Boo Darius. Yeah. Did you ever watch Westworld? No. Westworld, good HBO show. There was the, the whole thing of like, you would look at something and be like, that doesn't mean anything to me. Like, that's that's me when people show me that player's real name, quote-unquote government name. Uh, Tony says, which two teams are these? Team 1, Sweet 16 in 2017, Sweet 16 in 18, Elite 8 in 19, COVID 20, first round in 21, Sweet 16 in 22. And then Team 2 is uh, missed the tournament in 17, missed the tournament in 18, missed the tournament in 19, First round in 21, first round in 22. Asking me to guess those teams is is not a great way to spend our time. Yeah, I don't I don't know what we're going for here. Um is it Big Ten teams? Like can we get a something? This is a Purdue fan who's asking this. So I'd assume he's trying to make a point about someone in the Purdue world here. Purdue, um, Purdue, Purdue Illinois. No, it's not Purdue. Because there's a sweet six. Yeah, no. Because wait, no, it could be. I think the first one is Purdue because he left off twenty three. He very conveniently left off twenty three. Okay, so that the first one is Purdue. Is the second one Illinois because they missed the tournament first round? But he said sweet sixteen, didn't he? They ha- he hasn't had a sweet sixteen for team two. Is the second one UConn? Did they have a bunch of years of missing the tournament from seventeen to nineteen? They actually might have. Yeah, look that up for me. So he so basically he left off them losing to a 16 seed and left off UConn winning a national title. I think that's what he did here. I don't know if that's for sure, but uh, either way, I don't like it. That's bad business, bad behavior to leave off the worst moment in your program's history. J. Rod says uh, MSU Minnesota game smells like a bad matchup for State, though no matchup is good at this point. Backs against the wall, one of four in their last five. A loss could end the streak. Standing in their way, Cam Christie and family. Extra motivation for him. But hey, the game's at noon on a Thursday, which no one cares about. The Christie and Holloman family may be the only ones in the building. Uh, tickets as low as thirty dollars right now. Still priced too high for such a poor product do you think this could be a bad matchup i know we did a full preview but just summarize it quickly it's a bad matchup for anyone who has to watch this watch the preview i go in depth on it minnesota is not nearly as bad of a matchup as it seems on paper coop says uh, i want to know your guys opinions on parody in college basketball I often hear talking heads constantly contradicting themselves when it comes to the topic one second you hear it's great for the sport when the blue buds are good 
And then you hear it's great for the sport when mid majors get some recognition. Then they always cry when the tournament has a bid stealer. I'm sure the blue bloods being good is great for ratings and money purposes. But do you guys have an opinion on this? I'm I'm all for parody, whatever quote unquote you want that to mean. Until it means I got to watch a final four of Miami, Florida Atlantic, UConn, and San Diego State. I I'm of, of I'm of a believer that I want to see the best teams in the country compete for the title and when that doesn't happen it upsets me and i'll forever stay firm pat on this last year's final four was ass i don't care like it yes the games were maybe exciting but like i instead of watching some other teams play i was watching the teams that were there we had a miami team in the final four last season who returned nearly its entire core and has 15 wins and 16 losses this year and has lost nine straight games. And that team was in the final four and we had to pretend it was fun. Uh, I I am anti-parody. I'm fine to just say that. Like, I I want to see great teams be great. I don't want, I, like, I don't care. If, every, if everybody in the country could be equally as great, I would love that. But at least give me somebody great. If it's just a bunch of mediocre, but everyone's the same. That's, that's not fun for me. I want to see... Good basketball more than anything. Jeep Man says, in a 10-game series of 21 between Greg and Carter on a neutral court with a referee, what is the win-loss record? I think Carter dominates the paint, but I feel that Greg would own the three-point line. Put this out a while back, but I know you guys have been busy. Sorry, Jeep Man, that we missed your comment. Uh, we we haven't done a 10-game series, but we have played enough basketball against each other every now and then in the last couple of years to know what would happen here. What would happen, Cart? If, if stripes are there, I'm getting tossed by point seven. <laughs> easily maybe maybe um I, I i mean to to put it simply me and greg's one-on-one games go fairly similarly almost every time i think um there's a lot of mental warfare coming from gregory uh talking me into bad shot selections which i fall for every time which i know he's gonna do doesn't stop me um you know he hits a couple threes you know i go to the basket i lay it up miss a couple layups probably but make for the most part make some layups um, so I, you know, really, I really don't know how it would go. Um, I feel like stamina would start to get involved in that. How many games did he say we played? 10 game series to 21. So I think if we actually did this in, uh, in the real world, we would need to play maybe a game a day, maybe two games a day and actually like set this up either in five consecutive days or 10 consecutive days. Like it's a 10 game series with NBA style breaks. Like, okay, two games at carts game off. Then, then Greg home court in Kalamazoo. I actually, that'd be fun. Cause you could pick where you want to play. Like you could make me play outdoors. I can make you play indoors. This would be fun. Um, I will say this. I think we've played in some form, not to 21, but in some form games of basketball, probably six times in the last three or four years. I won one and we had both been drinking before the one I won. And it was on my home childhood basketball court in the driveway. So I do not like, I would be a big underdog deservedly. So the longer the game score is, if it's dragged to 21, the less of a chance I have, I need a, like a game to seven. I could get hot and steal it a game to 21. It's just hard to beat a man that is six foot seven with the footwork that card has. He's a good basketball player. I would say if we were going to do this, uh, I would want to implement not the three dribble rule. I think the three dribble rule actually helps you hurts me. Oh, de- definitely. Uh, see, it does. It does help me. I think defensively for sure. But if you give me unlimited dribbles, you got to think like I could literally just mm-hmm. straight back down like 10 to 15 dribbles. But I think that you essentially can already do that. And the game itself comes down to me talking you out of it anyway. It's not that doesn't change with dribbles. The only thing that changes with dribbles is my only way to score with three dribbles is if you let me catch and shoot. Um, Like I, I, I don't have the off the dribble package against somebody that's that much bigger than me. I just don't. So, um, but yeah, I would like to think if this played out and it wasn't three dribbles to 21, I might get one game might to seven. I think I could make it competitive. Should we hoop this weekend? I would love that. It'd be fun. Yeah, cards coming to Kalamazoo. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll do something with it. At the bare minimum, we should go to the Y and play a little. I'll put you through my shooting drill and see how you do. I probably struggle with that to be honest. Yeah, that's the only content I want. Then I want to see you struggle. 
That's crazy. Let's move on to the show. Thanks to the comment section today. This was fun. Uh, Can you say top- something else? I don't want to go into the segment saying with you and the words saying, I want to see you struggle. Can I get something else? That footwork compliment was really nice. Can you give me one more compliment about my game? I mean, I feel like you're a more in shape Kenneth Lofton. I'll take that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's get to the show. All three of our topics today are Big Ten awards oriented. The awards were released by the Big Ten this afternoon, and uh, we haven't reacted to them live. Yesterday, we gave you our picks for Big Ten awards. Today, I want to talk about who actually won these awards. So first team, all Big Ten, was released. Uh, There were six names on the release here because the coaches in the media had different players here. So the first team, all Big Ten, as selected by the media. Braden Smith, Zach Eady, Boo Booey, Jameer Young, and Terrence Shannon. The first team all Big Ten as selected by the coaches was that exact same group. Braden Smith, Zach Eady, Boo Booey, Terrence Shannon, but Marcus Damask, not Jameer Young. You can go through and see all the players on the second and third teams. Um, Just to name some that got recognized. Tony Perkins, Tyson Walker, Kise Tomanaga, AJ Storr, Khalil Ware, Peyton Sanford, Dawson Garcia, Rank Mass, Brooks Barnheiser, Ace Baldwin, all on the second or third teams, either from the media and or the coaches. Uh, And then honorable mention had a lot of names as well. Both Malik Hall and AJ Hogard were in the honorable mention for Michigan State. I think there were a lot of honorable mentions from other teams as well that uh, I don't have in front of me. So... Are you okay with this? Do you think the first team was correct? Are you okay that there ended up being a split vote between the media and the coaches? To be honest with you, I, I my initial reaction was I didn't like it because I, I never liked seeing like the split decision type thing. I like just seeing the five guys and those are the five guys. Like figure it out, whatever you got to do, come to come to grips with the fact. But I, I think this is this is this is correct. I think that last spot was up for grabs between Damask and Jameer Young, and it was so close that it was split between the coaches and the media. And that, I mean, that kind of makes sense to me. And also shout out to uh, Mike Latula. I think, I think Illinois 24 uh, seven former player does a lot of great stuff with like Illini uh, breakdowns, videos, post game stuff. Uh, big fan of his. He literally like, called this in a video. I think uh, last week that it would be split just because of how coaches look at like Marcus Damask differently than the media looks at Marcus Damask. And he kind of hit the nail on the head and look, I'm a Michigan State fan. Everyone knows that. I know there's going to be some uproar out there about Tyson Walker not making the first team. But, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. Like, Jameer Young and Marcus Damask, I think, had better years than him. Yeah. And, and, Big, and Big Ten play, like, especially. And part of that might not be Tyson's fault because he's banged up. But it, it, you know, it, the, the, it is what it is, though. That's the thing. Yeah. it uh, it, It's a Big Ten award. You're supposed to look at the Big Ten season. I believe that's what voters are told. Now, you can make your own decisions if you're a voter. Obviously, nobody nobody can tell you what to do. But if you're looking at the Big Ten season, I don't think there's an argument for Tyson over either Marcus Damask or Jameer Young. Um, Glad you shouted out Latula. He nailed it. You watched the clip of that. He's like, well, coaches know how hard it is to scout certain guys. They're going to reward that. Media don't. I did find it funny. There are comments from media on this who are responding that are like, there were four unanimous and then I'm not even sure there was a fifth. That's I'm paraphrasing something that Dylan from UM hoops, who I'm a big fan of does great work. uh, was like, I don't think there was a fifth. I think Damask was a pretty clear fifth. I said that earlier this week. Uh, I think if you watch, watch these games in person and see what he does uh, to me, he's very clearly been the fifth. He's been better than Taron Shannon for large stretches of this year for Illinois. So yeah. And and, and when you think like, the the grand landscape of the Big Ten. Like, there was two teams that were above everybody else in this conference to me, and that was predicated on two players, which, you know, I wouldn't have been upset if there was two Illinois players on the first team and two Purdue players on the first team because that kind of is how the conference played out. Um, but with that said, and that other guy was Jameer Young, I'm fine with that because Jameer Young was, you know, despite Maryland's struggles this season, Jameer Young was incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I think there were different guys that had this award as well, the fifth spot. Like, I think the fifth spot was kind of passed around, and that's why it landed on a split where people aren't sure. I think in January, this was Tyson Walker's spot. Um, 
I, I think coming off the non-conference with what he was doing, how he was scoring, it was his. Then I think at the end of January, I think it was A.J. Storr's spot. I think Wisconsin had a really decent start to the Big Ten season, and he was playing really well, and they were getting a lot of credit. Wisconsin had worked their way up to the two line, and he was sort of the face of what had changed for Wisconsin in a good way. Then Wisconsin fell off a cliff, and Tyson got hurt, and – you're looking around like, is it still these guys? Meanwhile, Marcus Damask elevated Illinois while Terrence Shannon was out. And then when Terrence Shannon came back, Marcus Damask is still the crunch time scorer. I get why people are frustrated. Jameer Young was involved. Um, I would certainly put Damask over Jameer Young based on what I've seen this season. But if you're moving past Damask, if you're looking for who the sixth name is, I do think it should be Jameer Young. And I do think it should generally be pretty much a consensus on that. Anytime Maryland's done anything this year, Jameer Young has had to get like 30. And I know uh, you you gave me a number on Tyson before. What, what was it, like six times in his career he's had something? Six times he's scored 25 points. And uh, I'm not sure that's this season or his career, but uh, he's 0-6 in those games when he scores more than 25 points. And that's not to say it's his fault, but I think there's a gap between like Maryland literally needed 30 from Jameer to oh. even be competitive in certain games. Michigan State has honestly been at their best when – it's other guys helping out Tyson a little more, and they've been really one-dimensional and losing a lot of games when it's had to be all Tyson. Uh, and to your point, it's not Tyson's fault, but it's also not anyone else's fault. And I think like <laughs> that, that kind of gets lost for me when people are like, well, why are we blaming Tyson? Uh, Tyson got hurt. That's what happened. Tyson got hurt and his numbers tanked. And yes, that's that's not something that like he did incorrectly here. But it works against him like that. That is a result that happened that when you get awards at the end of the season, like you have to take that stuff into consideration. The reality is that Tyson Walker hasn't missed games and Tyson Walker hasn't been playing well because he's playing through injury. So you don't get awards because you're tough and you play through injury. Like part of the reason Michigan State has lost four or five games down the stretch is that Tyson Walker scoring 16 points on 16 shot attempts a game right now. That's bad. That's not winning basketball. And it's a lot of the same stuff people are criticizing AJ Store for. Oh, he's just a chucker. They don't go in. That's been happening with Tyson for a month right now. And again, it's not his fault. He's hurt, but you don't get awards for being hurt and being tough and play through it. So um, ultimately, I wish Damask would have gotten it unanimously. I don't have a huge issue with it, though. Is there anybody else that you felt was a miss beyond the first team? Uh, I okay. wanted Coleman on the second team. I'm kind of bummed yeah, he wasn't. I, I probably want to Coleman on the second team. One. Quick question I want to ask you, because I think Jameer Young was incredible this year, but like he has the same percentages as Tyson. Yeah. But better numbers, though. So is that is that where the difference comes in? No, I mean, I think the percentages are like they, they have both been inefficient this year at times. Um, I don't know. To me, I I still think that there are more issues with what's as crazy as it sounds, what's around Jameer Young than there have been with Michigan State. Like, at least Tyson had Malik Hall playing well. Has anybody else on Maryland had, like, a stretch of... Uh, to me, he's been so alone on that team this year. Julian Reese has been actually pretty good during stretches. Yeah, I guess. He missed games at the end of the season. Yeah, he did. But, I mean, he's a 14-9 and nine guy. Yeah, Julian Reese had, what, 2-2 two and two against Michigan State's front court? Did he? Yeah. Oh, did he actually? He had two and two against Mati Sissoko. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That automatically puts him out of anything. Um, yeah, I I do think that Coleman probably would have or should have been second team. I'm not sure if he was, but at the end of this, to wrap this up, biggest gripe for me is I think you do need to just decide. And I think that fifth guy should just be Damask. And we should go forward with that. Yeah. Rather than do Jameer Young versus Tyson, which ultimately doesn't matter very much to me. Uh I would rather give it to the guy who's the closer on the second best team. Like, <laughs> I don't get. We watch. You can watch Illinois. There's a lot of games. Damask is as good, if not better, than Terrence Shannon, and always has the ball in crunch time. Why are we acting like that doesn't matter? I don't know. Um, okay, second element here: conversation from the awards and second topic today. A split on Coach of the Year: Matt Painter and Fred Hoiberg both take it home. I don't think they revealed. I don't think this was like the media Coach of the Year and the the coach's coach of the year. I think this is just, hey, it's the co-coach of the year. Do you like this, and did they get it wrong? I hate co-anything. Do you hate co-hosts? We're co-hosts. Uh, yeah, but, like, if we got an award 
technically I wouldn't want it as sleepers. You got to pick one of us. Who's getting it, Greg or me? And I'd be and I'd be fine with that decision. I don't like co anything. Decide who. Like there shouldn't be co player of the years. There is one player that is better than the other one. Pick them. Like you got to. I don't like anything co. Um, with that said, we we had the conversation the other day. I personally thought that that Painter should have got Big Ten Coach of the Year. I just think that he was. I thought he was the best coach in the league this year. I thought he had the best team. He was the best coach. Um, you know, they went what eighteen and three in the Big Ten, I believe. Uh, you know, Hoiberg gets great overachieving year, uh, historical finish, I think, as far as Nebraska basketball. But I, I, I just think that I, I, I thought Painter was the best coach in the league this year. All right, it looks like I have to go to war here. Um, I didn't anticipate that you were going to be on the Painter side of this, and now it's going to make me look worse, and I dread this. But here we are. I know we have a big Purdue audience here. Here's – let me go to war. I keep it honest. I keep it real. All right. Uh, if two candidates are both relatively equal deserving of an award, which I think these two are. I think Matt Painter is – has the healthiest program has built this into a national title contender. He dominates the league. I get it. He, if I'm picking a coach who I believe is the actual best coach, any given moment, it's Matt painter. To me, this award is who has done the best job this year, which I get why there's an argument. Painter is the clear, obvious answer. I also think the best job relative to what you had is part of this conversation. And I do believe that Nebraska is, a, a better performance on a singular season than starting the year as the preseason number one and ending ending it as what number two, number three. I, like you, you did what was expected of you, and it's impressive, and that's great, and that all is. Painter deserves credit for all of that. I get it. Fred Hoiberg's team was not supposed to be anything at all, and they just finished third in a Big Ten. And when you have candidate number one, who is. Well, his team is clearly the best. That's the platform candidate number one Matt Painter is running on, right? His team is the best. Then you have candidate number two, Fred Hoiberg, whose platform is this team overachieved the most. This team is the best head-to-head with this team overachieved the most. If only there was a way to know what would happen if those two went head-to-head, right? Because the team that overachieved the most played the best team. The team that no one argues is way better than Nebraska, right? Painter's way better. Purdue's way better than Nebraska. Fred Hoiberg packed him up by 18, and then Matt Painter complained about court storming. So I I can't sit here and imagine a world where Hoiberg doesn't win this award after that result this year. I can't believe there's anyone from the Purdue circle that's upset that Fred Hoiberg's in the conversation for this. And I don't think most are. I think most people are like, okay, it's co. That's okay. But to me, this feels like we just gave Painter a bit of a participation trophy. Because we knew Purdue fans were going to freak out about it. And I again, he's the best coach in the conference. If that's how you define the award for who did the best job this year, then I just disagree with how you're approaching that award. I, the, the thing is, I really don't have much of pushback on that because it makes sense to me. But I, I don't know. It, it just makes it such a hard award to, like, I guess, decipher because it's like, in that case, did Matt Painter have any chance this year to win Big Ten Coach of the Year? I, I think if like I'm trying to went, like if he, it, if he went undefeated or like lost. No, one. I think I think if Nebraska if Nebraska hadn't done what they've done, probably, probably like to me there there have to be other candidates who emerge. If there aren't other candidates who emerge, then yeah, you just reward the guy who's dominant. But like. It, if if Michigan State and Illinois and Maryland and Ohio State were two through five in this league and all went 13 and seven, then yeah, Painter. But that didn't happen. All those teams underachieved, partially because Nebraska was way better than they were supposed to be and beat a lot of them and beat Purdue head to head. Like, that's not, it's not a small task that Nebraska's going to the NCAA tournament. And again, based on the roster, the guys they lost last year from a team that was pretty competitive. He replaced them. He crushed the portal. This team's good. He went head to head once. He beat Painter. How how is it a conversation to be? I don't get it. And again, I'm not I'm not upset that Painter's getting an accolade because Painter deserves an accolade. He's awesome. But I don't I don't see the argument. I truly don't see the argument for like I, does Painter just get this award next year then too? Every single year that Purdue's top five in the country is Painter automatically the coach of the year. 
Depends what other people do. Okay. But if it depends on what other people do, then it's Fred Hoiberg's award this year. If it yeah. doesn't depend on what people do, then it's Painter next year. And it's every every single year. It's the Matt Painter, Gene Cady Coach of the Year Award. I think Diebler's getting screwed on this one. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a crazy concept. Uh, final topic today. We'll make this one quick. We want to give out our own awards. Uh, we we do not get votes for Big Ten media uh, awards for first team all conference and all that. Maybe that should change. By the way, yeah. coaches looking- coaches award, media award, sleepers award. Yeah, but maybe one day we'll actually get to vote for Big Ten. That'd be fun. Uh, although I shouldn't be trusted because there's no way AJ Hogarth ends up honorable man. I would have been emailing, showing up at people's doors to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, big sleepers awards. We're gonna give out Big Ten awards to just our favorites. That's how this works. Uh, we have a first team all sleepers and then a sleepers player of the year. We want to recognize five players and one a little more so uh, as the sleepers of the year. So, Cart, go ahead. With, without further ado, take it away. Who are the first team all sleepers players? This is our favorites, by the way, too. So before everyone gets up in arms about any type of numbers or whatnot, it's our favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, captain of the team at center is, is one other is none other than Dane Danger. That's I mean, that's easy. I think you guys all knew where that was coming. I didn't know we had a captain, but I endorse it. It's okay. Yeah, Dane's our captain. Uh, at the four or the next spot, we have Malik Hall. Um, obviously, for reasons, you know, what he's done this year. Love what he's done. The turn he's taken. Uh, at PG, or our guards, we have Braden Smith. First team all Big Ten. First team all sleepers as well. We also have Budarius Bowie, of course. Like, why wouldn't we have Budarius Bowie? And at the other spot, small forward, whatever position you want to put it at, we have Ty Berry from Northwestern, mm. who I don't think many people expected him to be here, but he did. He deserves to be here. This is our all fun team. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and announce the sleepers favorite fun player of the year goes to the six foot Westfield, Indiana goatee sleeve wearing three to the veins night, night ring him. None other than point guard, Braden Smith. Clap it up for Braden. Yeah, he's the sleeper of the year. We tweeted it out already, but uh, you do a sleep celebration, you are the sleeper of the year. But also, in pure Big Ten style, I'd like to make it co-players of the year because my my sleeper of the year is Budarius Lamar Bowie. We just had the whole no co-player thing. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's only right that if we're talking Big Ten basketball, we just end up divided and do a co-player. So uh, congrats to Budarius Lamar Bowie Jr., who is the co-sleeper of the year with Braden Smith who still did the coldest thing I've seen this year. And uh, well, I just want to say my people might be confused on Ty Berry. Uh, we do love our Wildcats. I'm sad that he's injured and he's out. But uh, one of my favorite moments of this entire season was you discovering that Ty Berry was really good. We did the Michigan State Northwestern recap, and you were like, I mean, like, does Ty Berry ever do this? And I was like, I think so. And then we looked up the game logs. It's like he has four threes every single game. <laughs> like, this guy's good. awesome. Uh, all well-deserved. Love, love our Sleepers of the Year. Congratulations, Sleepers of the Year. Uh, no Zach Eady, your thoughts? I love you, Zach. I love Zach too. You don't love Zach as much as Dane, though. I don't know what Zach's gonna have to do to get over the hump. Yeah, there's nothing he can do to be honest. Yeah, I, I try to talk him out of that, Zach. I'm sorry, maybe in the future. Uh, okay, to one big thing presented by Big B. What do you have today, Cart? Well, my one big thing is that I just want to shout these out. Like, these new golf clubs are beautiful, and I can't wait to shoot a 110 with them. That's all. Okay. Uh, I would like to play golf with you. You want to play golf this weekend? We could play. Yeah. It's going to be nice. Can you bring the clubs? Yeah, of course I can. Bring the clubs. I'll make a tea time in the morning. Uh, my one big thing is I'd like you to guess how many consecutive free throws I made today at the gym. Uh, I'm going to say 72. Wow. That is really generous to me, and I appreciate you. It was just 22, but I felt yeah, good about suck. it. You suck. That's crazy. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday. Go watch all of our previews and recaps. Leave some comments. Leave some likes. It really helps us get those off the ground. We appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow.